Hi guys, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Uh, this is one of my worm farm areas and a friend of mine asked me just recently could she have some worms and I don't sell them and I thought alright well maybe I could sell them because they just breed up massively in these various farms and areas I've got around the, the yard. Look at those, they're into some old grass clippings. So I thought I'd experiment on a way of separating them easily so that I can actually have some tubs of worms for sale and certainly some some to give to my friend. So I wanted a method that was quick and relatively easy uh, so I'm going to use this plastic tub it's actually an old military storage tub I think it does say explosives on the top but I'm sure the worms won't explode basically it's just a nice solid rigid plastic tub and my secret ingredient an electric blanket. Let's set it up and see how it works. Okay I'm gonna start by just putting a good layer or a thin layer of, um, of basically worm castings and a bit of soil in the bottom of the tray just to give a little bit of evenness to the mix. There actually is worms in that because um, the other sample I'm going to shovel in with more of the worms is a bit more grassy and I want them to be able to travel through that tub fairly easily so this is basically just um, be a good medium for them to travel from one end because obviously I'm going to be using heat and hopefully they want to get away from it and all gather at the other end so this area I'm going to gather the worms from has had a lot of um, grass clippings and excess kitchen scraps and it's just a spot where I dump any extra food that I don't have time to deal with so consequently it's quite fibrous you can see that's a mat of grass but there's plenty of worms in there so I'm basically going to dig out enough here to put in this tub so I think I've got a reasonable worm population and then I'll level it out a bit so that should be enough. It was really hard to tell how many worms are in this because it was so fibrous and there was just layers of decaying grass clippings. But there's certainly plenty in there. And this end I put a little bit more of those finished castings so there wasn't any worms or any one or two in that section. So that will be my harvesting area if all goes to plan. And hopefully the worms will travel out of this into the cooler area and you can see underneath I've just got that hanging off the edge of the that's the last heating line there from the electric blanket uh, it's just an old one by the way it's not one I've taken off our guest room bed or anything um, so all we need to do now is crank it up we'll go to full power and hopefully we don't cook worms for lunch I'll check it in an hour or two and just see what's going on Right, this experiment's been ticking away for about three, three and a half hours now. I just set the lid back on here. I don't know that the lid's necessary. Um, we can't see anything going on, really, which I didn't expect. But I stuck my uh, compost thermometer in. And when I first started, it was just over 20 degrees Celsius, which is about, say, 70 Fahrenheit. And you can see it's gone up well, pretty much 10 degrees Celsius in that time now the from what i've read the comfortable range temperature range for worms is between 60 and 80 fahrenheit and we'll go with the fahrenheit because it's easier to see on the scale there so we're clearly over 80 now in that end of the tub so i would imagine that the worms are starting to feel a little uncomfortable it's good that the heat has been really gradual um, the electric blanket has only just warmed to feel so it's been a real gradual warming I don't know how hot it's actually going to get but um, you would imagine that the worms are starting to notice it now and uh, being the gradual raise in temperature should give them plenty of time to search out the cooler spot so we'll leave the experiment keep running and um, be interesting to see how hot it actually gets and then after a while I'll um, I'll just see how the concentration of worms is at the cooler end. 
Okay, time to check this experiment. I've actually left this overnight and it hasn't got any hotter than where it's sitting now, which is just a whisker over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, well into the range that apparently worms aren't comfortable with. So let's have a look and see what's been going on. I've left the lid on just loosely and there's clearly some condensation happening on top of the lid. Now, nothing appears apparent from the top. Uh, if I feel this end here, the soil feels coolish. And I can, it's subtle, but I can definitely feel it's a bit warmer that end. So hopefully that's encouraged some migration. I can still, still see some springtails hopping around in here. I did a second ago. But let's have a bit of a dig with my, just my hands and see if we can establish where the worms have gone or if it's even affected them or if they're cooked. I don't think there's any issues there. It hasn't got hot enough. All right, we'll have a bit of a dig in here. Okay, there's still worms in this end. Quite a lot. So, and the soil is nowhere near hot. It's barely warm. So it's probably not much different to a decent summer's day. Well, there's even some little slaters in here and there's definitely springtails hopping around. So this experiment then hasn't concentrated the worms simply because the temperature hasn't got hot enough. Let's have a look in this end. Now there was actually no worms or hardly any worms in amongst this because it was finished castings. And I can't see, oh there's one there. There seems to be a larger population of springtails down this end. If we get to the bottom, oh, some worms have certainly moved in. But as far as separating the worms and a, a, more of a concentration in that cooler end, it hasn't happened. There's been no real change, they still seem to be evenly distributed. Uh, I would like to crank the heat up a little bit more, but the electric blanket's on maximum at the moment. Perhaps I could double it over and just see if that makes a difference. We'll try that. So I did double the electric blanket over and I've let it go for about three hours now and the temperature has certainly got up higher. We're at about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's starting to get hot. So let's have a look inside. It's been about three hours since we last had a look. Okay, it actually smells warm now. So what's going on? I can still see some springtails and oh look at all the worms up here. Didn't notice them. So they're coming up to the top. It's clearly getting too warm for them down below. There's a big ball of them there. So that kind of works in its on its own in that I could harvest them off the top. But we really want them to go down the cool end. Alright, I can feel definite warmth in the soil now. And the worms are obviously a bit uncomfortable with that. Coming up around the edges where it's a bit cooler. We want them to go down the other end. So we'll move that pile back. Let's have a look down this end. Alright, all the springtails have gone down here. Perhaps they're just more clever than what worms are. Stacks of springtails down the bottom and a few worms. But really the separation isn't happening as I'd like. The worms are basically coming up to the top surface in droves and all around the edges. Look at this. They're trying to get away from the heat. They just haven't found their way down to the cool end. Yep, mountains of them all around the edges. That's really interesting to see how many worms are in this lot because I couldn't see very many when I moved all this in and look at them. So the experiment is concentrating the worms, but it's concentrating them around the edges. They've come up from the base and they're trying to find a cooler spot. 
So I'll turn it off now. I don't want to stress them anymore. I think this experiment has merit, but we just need to work out how to get the worms to travel horizontally. Perhaps they're not going to. Perhaps they automatically just go up because the heat's on the base. I might try something with a deeper um, container and we can then take the top section off because it will separate them then vertically. Certainly worth more, uh, some more investigation. I'll probably post this video as it is now um, and gives you all some food for thought. I'm open to any suggestions. I like the idea of using a gentle heat from an electric blanket to encourage the worms to move. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of bait their worms with food. Uh, it doesn't work so much in my situation because they're, they're just pretty much living amongst compost. So there's, there's a, a sort of an unlimited supply of food. Uh, I did a larger uh, separation system outside which worked really well and I'll put the link up now and that was a horizontal migration just allowing one end to dry out and keeping the other end damp and that worked fine but the heat I think the heat may be stressing the worms so I will turn it off um, it certainly hasn't killed them it hasn't got that hot but it's encouraging them to move and they're just going up and then they're hanging around the sides and I'm a bit worried that they won't go to the cooler end and they will actually cook themselves. So I'll post this video. Um, I'd love some feedbacks. Let me know what you think. And I'll, I'll start thinking of some sort of vertical system where I can get the worms to, worms to migrate to the top with heat at the base and see how that goes. Okay, so thanks for watching. We'll, um, we'll keep thinking. See you in the next video.